Oprah episode. Rough childhood, jail time, violence against women. Mike Tyson's life's journey has seen him climb mountains only to crash land. Tyson is in Maui, staying out of trouble and preparing for his June 8th heavyweight fight against Lennox Lewis. On Wednesday, he spoke with reporters, including ESPN's Max Kellerman. I'm the biggest fighter in the history of the sport. Um, my, um, if you don't believe it, um, just check the, check the cash register. You know what I mean? It's, it talks for itself. You know what I mean? There's no athlete in the history of the world that ever um, demand and receive the money that I, I received for the smallest amount of work. Did you like that? You want more? We're giving it to you. More from Mike Tyson in our Sunday conversation on Sports Center at 11 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. How much money I have, and I'm a black man, and you're a white man? Would you trade places with me? Race, pain, hardships. When called, Mike Tyson can make a polished point. Irritated, he can seem like a raving lunatic. Both appear in our Sunday conversation. It's prior, Mike Tyson didn't have to talk to scare opponents. His scowl was enough. Past few years, however, Tyson appears bent on frightening people with obscene words and bizarre behavior. On pay-per-view at 2 a.m., the act might be funny, but with Tyson, it's a combination of truth, trouble, and insecurity. Tyson does have a premium cable special coming. Title fight with Lennox Lewis, June 8th. We warn you, Sunday conversation comes with threats, sexual comments, and language typical in all of Tyson's conversations these days. I think the average person believes that I'm a f nut and I deserve whatever happened to me. That's what I believe. You know, you don't, you just look in their eye, look in the core of them. You don't even know what the, you're a young man. Win the title again, it puts you in a, in the Ali, Joe Lewis, Jack Johnson, your idols level. How do you prepare and control it for a fight like this? Well, that's that's very um, that's interesting that you put me in the um, league with those um, illustrious fighters. But I've proved since my my career, I've surpassed them as far as um, my popularity. I'm the biggest fighter in the history of the sport. Um, my, um, if you don't believe it, um, just check the, check the cash register. I'm angelic, but still I'm just scum, but I'm angelic and I, I take the both and I just deal with the both. You do you feel there's some sort of hypocritical state in the media? I mean, no, um, I'm at the state of the game, win, lose, or draw, you're all gonna eat. You guys don't care about me, I don't particularly care about you, but your guys, oh, I can't beat you guys, but your guys got a better you hand that I do. You guys control the media and the press, but um, I'm in the state of my list. Listen, I'm 36 years old, going to 36. I never dreamed of living this long. I never dreamed of fornicating with as many as beautiful women as I did. I'm having as much money as I did, so I, and having as beautiful and intelligent kids as I did. So if I was to die tomorrow, I've, I've won. I've won. Mike, that's I've what, won. What you just said reminds me, in a way, of Mickey Mantle, who always felt like he wasn't going to live to be an old man, so he lived like he wasn't going to. Then when he was an old man, says, if only I would have known, I'd have taken better care of myself. I don't know, but Mickey Mantle, don't care how much um, he's experienced um, death in the family at a young age or premature death, he's not a nigga. A n freedom's only, the death is only freedom of knows, you know what I mean? Because death can't be as bad as just smiling when you're not happy, sweating when you're not hot, scratching when you're not eating. You're perceived even by black entertainers like Chris Rock or Jamie Foxx, who recently in his HBO uh, stand-up. Right now, people, you'd be nervous. It'd be like a pit came in without a leash. I mean, that must be an alienating feeling. For no, it's not. You know what it is? If it shows that even though they come across as being um, less um, um, caught gestures, that they're conscious of my pain. And they know, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes my fuse is so short, and it's, I'm at the, um, the level where it's a possibility I may kill them if they say something totally disrespectful to me. And um, we just have a, synth, a, a ridiculous kinship. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe a white person could say something to me, but a person that feels the same pain I feel, and he, he associated with this guy to humiliate me and to denigrate me, and he knows the pain that I'm feeling, he actually knows the pain. You know what I mean? I don't, listen, don't, don't, get, don't get me wrong, I'm not for the black cause at all. <laughs> you know, but, but, having, but what happened to him? Are we not second-class citizens? Would you trade places with me, knowing how much, how much money I have, and I'm a black man, and you're that's a white what, man? That's what Chris Rock said. 
Are you using harnessing any fear that you might have or anxiety about this fight into a crazy act to scare Lennox? But Lennox got to be feeling fear, too. You think so? Everyone. I think Lennox thinks that I'm afraid of him. I really don't think he has any fear in me whatsoever. That's why I think I'm a little, a little bit more energized than ever, because I think he has totally, um, he has had no, um, respect, there's no regard, and he has disregarded anything that I'm about. Can you name any specific examples? I, it's one in, in particular when, um, we, I was out with my wife, I tell you, at the time, and he looked at me in disrespect as if he was going to beat me up, regardless if my wife was there. He just looked at me totally disrespectful to my wife, and my wife probably not knowing things, well, this is a big mother He might really do a number on us, right? And he really, he really, um, he really did a number on me. I was really hurt, because I tried to be in that. I was getting ready to say, oh, how you doing, champ? Because my wife said, say hi to him. And I, I think me and my wife was going through some problems. I was going through this book. I was trying to be the white man for a month or so. Well, theoretically speaking, he is a wonderful man. And I was trying to be nice, and he really, uh, he really made me feel like a shit head. You know? But he'll pay for that with his health. <laughs>